University Motors. Today we're going to talk about back, back axles, disc wheel, wire wheel, stuff like that. Uh, in the background outside, they're chewing up a little tiny uh, woods right next to us, and they got these big machines that are reducing trees like this to sawdust. So that's not my stomach grumbling, if you can even hear it in the background. That's the, the uh, feeding these trees. Anyway, here's the rear hub. This is the, this is the disc wheel rear hub. Obviously, a wire wheel hub has got splines on it. And why have I taken the studs out? Well, because... On my daughter's car, um, when we got it, there was a rear axle on it, and I took it apart to put the new differential and pinion wheel washers in place so it wouldn't clunk. Actually, I had copper, copper differential wheels uh, washers. The ones you buy today are plastic. They've been plastic since who knows when, maybe since the beginning. And they get chewed up real fast. But the copper ones last a, a lot longer. Anyway, I took it apart to do that. And when I took the back cover off, there's a hole in it. It rusted through from the outside in. And we couldn't make any sense out of it all. It just did this craziness. Um, but anyway, so I got another cover from Paul Deershaw in, in uh, Arvada, Colorado. He sent me a, another rear cover and put that on everything. And everything's hunky-dory. Rebuild the brakes, everything, put it all back together. Put the wheels on. Guess what? It's a wire wheel diff on a disc wheel car. That explains why there were these monster helpers on the springs to jack the back end of the car up so that the inside of the wheels wouldn't rub the, the inside of the wheel arch. So anyway, so now what am I going to do? Find another rear axle? No, I'm just going to get spacers. So I couldn't find three quarter inch spacers. That's the thickness that you need, three quarters of an inch. That's the difference on each side between disc and wire wheel. So I went to the machine shop. They didn't want to do it. They machine shops are all scrambling for guys. I walked in there and the guy, first thing the guy asked me is, you want a job? I said, dude, I'm retired. So why am I working so hard on this? Um, anyway, I had this thing made and the existing studs, which went through here, Okay, I purchased some online that said half inch studs that are about three quarters of an inch longer. How cool is that, right? Except, guess what? The diameter here and the diameter here are not the same. Therefore, I have to turn these all down on a lathe and, and um, re, oh my gosh, what a, what a whole lot of work. Anyway, in the end, I'm going to end up with these studs that come out of here and then these spacers sitting on, on, on top of the drum. The drum goes here and that'll push the wheels out. Perfectly acceptable way to, to do it. So a couple years ago when my girlfriend and I were in England, we, keep, we kept seeing these trucks that said bespoke. We'd never heard the word. Now it's, you start to hear it um, a little bit here, see it printed. But it means um, uh, custom. Custom done. We've got custom cabinets. No, no, if you're British, you've got bespoke cab cabinets. Well, these are bespoke, but I've got disc wheels. The spoke has nothing to do with wire wheel spokes, of course. Anyway, that's just the humor. Um, we're gonna go over and look at the rear brakes because the rear brakes are all apart, and that's an issue that comes up over and over and over. So let's go over to the car. So here we are at the car, and here we are with the brakes all, all assembled properly. There's not a good picture of this in the workshop manual, and there's not um, really my other video about MGB rear brakes is about the best there is um, as far as seeing where, where the springs go. So at the top, we've got our, our, our lower spring that isn't, isn't quite so strong, uh, pulling the, the shoes together through the holes and that's abutting the adjuster. Down here we've got the, the bigger spring with this tag that comes off the back end of it sitting on top of the handbrake lever. And then we've got the spring for the handbrake lever with the, um, it's an old, these are brand new, this ob obviously is used. And there, there are, um, you want to put this on so that the wire goes towards the outside of the cylinder so that when you operate the brakes which i'll do here you can see that that pulls it pulls it back 
together. We've got the anti um, rattle springs hooked on here. These are common from the very earliest, not the first TD, but almost the first TD. Um, and then they run all the way through the MGA and through the MGB. Now, a couple of problems that I had with modern parts. These are really difficult to get on because either the pins are a little too short or the washers aren't done quite well enough. Anyway, I had a real problem getting these on, but I, I got them on. And once I got them on and put the, put the drum on, oh my gosh, I ran the adjuster all the way in and it barely stopped. So I knew that I had to have more adjustment to start off with. I had, I had to be at the beginning of my adjustment, not the end of my adjustment, with new shoes, a new adjuster pack, and a new cylinder. But it was too small. So what's wrong? Well, the first thing you'd think is, well, maybe the brake drum has been turned too far. I don't have a way to measure it, but it right on the outside, or maybe it's on the inside. Well, it was someplace. I thought it says uh, maximum 60, 60 over. I don't see it written on here. I thought it was on, on here. Anyway, I've got no way of measuring it, and a couple more thousands after 60 are going to make an awful lot of difference. So rather than buy new drums and hope that that would work, I took the little, and we'll go back over to the, to the bench here in just a second. I took these little adjusters and I made new ones so they're a little bit longer. So it pushed the shoes out a little bit more at the top. And that gave me my adjustment that's necessary to start off with. So this is the, this is the, the correct assembly. Um, I'm hoping that Max has got a nice tight picture of this. You can see the grease, all the grease around here it hasn't run yet. Um, and you want to get as much grease off as you can, but you sure want to have grease on here to start with for that seal so that the seal doesn't run dry uh, for the first couple of miles that, that you drive the car before the rear axle fluid is able to slosh over and get through the rear bearings and, and oil that up. Let's go over to the bench right now and take a look at these little adjuster pieces. Okay, so here we have the original adjuster that fits on a little triangular pyramid I guess that's redundant but these guys as I said I thought they were too short or at least the way that I came up with solving this is to make them longer so I started with a bolt not this bolt because this isn't quite long enough I started with the one which had less um, uh, thread on it or probably a longer bolt cut the head off cut it down here put this angle on it you know, just on a grindstone and then and then took my uh, die grinder and cut a slot in it and made them about an eighth of an inch longer than these are and that's what took up the extra uh, space that I needed to and now they adjust up very well so I, I don't know if anyone else is going to have this problem I don't know what the problem is here whether the drum is too big shoes are too small the the adjuster pack made wrong the, the wheel cylinder is made wrong. Everything is made by somebody else now. They're not factory. You can't just go to the factory stuff and get factory quality stuff. So you have to do what you do. Anyway, that's our lesson for today. MGB rear brakes, just a real quickie. Remember that the wire wheel diff is narrower by in, an inch and a half overall. Therefore, if you're going to put disc wheels on, you got to push, you know, you got to change these studs, and that's turning out to be a real problem. I'm going to be on the lathe for a couple hours here cutting these things down. Anyway, go to my website, University Motors LTD, top ribbon, press the button that says join our newsletter. It'll go immediately on to constant contact, and when I send my note out um, on Sundays, I usually do on Sundays, to let you know that my Zoom session is on Monday night. It's coming up this next week, but this video will last a lot longer than that. Um, you'll be able to get it on notice that that Zoom session is coming up. So, and also, if you feel the inclination, you can also look on the on the uh, website there, and there's a little tiny PayPal button that says "Help John with his retirement." Thank you very much for your donation. Anyway, until then, safety fast.